So rather than do more of that same problem, we're going to jump ahead to number 14, flying a kite. Let's, let's go fly a kite up to the highest height, up through the atmosphere and up where the air is clear. All right, we got our friend Inga flying a kite at a height of 300 feet. The wind carrying the kite horizontally away at a rate of 25 feet per second. How fast must she let out the spring when the, the string, if you put a kite on a spring, it's just going to bounce back and forth. Put those, how much fast must she let out the string when the kite is 500 feet away from her? All right. They didn't draw a picture. How am I supposed to do this problem if they didn't draw a picture? I guess I'll have to draw my own picture. All right. <clears throat> so we'll draw a picture and it's often a good idea to start these problems drawing a picture. So let's start with, um, let's start with Inga. Here she is flying her kite and she's Swedish. So she definitely has two pigtails as all Swedish girls do. All right. And she's flying a kite. So here's her string, which is perfectly taut and therefore in an exact straight line. And then here's her kite up there flying. Okay. Now, we're also going to, because it didn't say anything about how tall Inga is, we're going to just forget about her height. She's Swedish, so she's probably not that tall anyway. And then draw a nice right triangle there. Um, because we know the kite is high, flying, it says, uh, at a uh, height of 300 feet. So we're going to, we're just put it there and not worry about her personal height. All right, now it says the wind is carrying the kite horizontally away. So the kite is moving this way. All right, now, so I've, uh, I will go ahead and put on, it says 25 feet per second, 25 feet per second. All right, what I'm doing at this point is, so I'm drawing my picture and that's really part of collecting all the given information. Part of the given information is the geographic, the geometric layout. All right, so, but let's really collect all these quantities and see what we're dealing with. So, is, it's, here's what, what I really wanted to talk about. It says, create variables for unknown quantities. So, unlike the previous problem, this problem has no variables in it. You can't solve a problem without variables. So, what's going to be a variable and what's not? It's tempting to say X and Y are variables, but... The height of the kite is not variable because the height the kite is traveling horizontally. This 300 is constant. So in all these problems, really in all calculus problems, you have to be watching what's not changing. Things that are constant are, are not going to be variables in your problem because constant and variable are literally antonyms. All right, so what is the other variable? She's letting the string out as the kite cruises along this way. So what the other variable is the length of the string. And I'm going to use S for string um, using the alliteration and not bothering uh, about the fact that the S looks like a five because, you know, I'm eventually going to have to do physics and deal with S's, so I might as well learn how to do that. <clears throat> All right, now I can interpret when it says that the wind is carrying the kite horizontally away, I can now say that that 25 feet per second is dx dt. All right. Now I couldn't say that it was dx dt without coming up with my own variable x. So sometimes that's sort of an obstacle for people. That's why I put it in here. Create variables for unknown quantities. We might have to come up with our own variables. They didn't give us variables for s and x. We had to come up with that. All right. So what other information do we have? So the 300 feet we've got on the diagram, that's not changing. The 25 feet per second is a dx dt, right? So recording rates of change as ddt, 25 meters per second, that's a rate of change, so it's dx dt. So what's dx dt? Okay, it says when the kite is 500 feet away from her, so that's this distance here. Now I'm not going to put the equals 500 here because the length of the string is not constantly 500. It's at a particular instant when S equals 500. S is not 500 all the time, only at that particular instant when we want to know the rate of change. All right, uh, so I think I've got all the information there. Now let's look at what the question is. The question says, how fast must she let out the string? So what variable is that? How fast she's letting out the string? 
Well, it's a rate of s, so it's ds dt that is our question. So as usual, I like to make a note of what our question is because it can be pretty easy to lose track of that. Now, once I've done that, I've got all the information that I need off the problem so I can put my book away, which is good because my desk is sort of cramped and I have a lot of room here. And now we'll start solving the problem. So what, what do I need next? So I've actually completed doing this, collecting all the given information. Now I'm in step two, write an equation relating the variables of the problem. Well, what is an equation that relates the variables of the problem? Take a moment to think about that. Okay, so if you got a chance to think about it, the equation that relates them is Pythagoras theorem. And you, you're gonna need to be able to spot that, um, you know, for test questions. All right. They'll give you some layout. You need to spot when Pythagoras theorem is in play or, you know, 30, 60, 90 triangle or something like that. Got to know all your geometry. Oh, this equals s squared, doesn't it? Equals s squared. All right. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to write it like this. I'm going to write the s squared first. s squared equals x squared plus 300 squared. All right. Now, um, one thing I'm not going to do is I'm not going to figure out what 300 squared is. It's like 90,000 or something, but who cares? So we're going to do a derivative. It's going to go away. So and here's another thing that I'm not going to do. I'm not going to solve this for s because we're doing implicit differentiation anyway. And the strength of implicit differentiation is it allows you to solve uh, derivatives with it, it enables you to find derivatives without solving for any particular variable. So we can just leave the s squared equals x squared plus 300 squared. We don't have to solve anything. So we're going to do the derivative of s squared is 2s, but since we're doing a derivative of s with respect to t, we're going to have to put a ts dt on it, and that equals, same thing for the x squared, it's going to be 2x dx dt, and as advertised, the 300 squared is going to go away. So I never had to bother figuring out what that was. All right, now what? So now uh, I've, I've differentiated implicitly, so I've done step three, differentiate implicitly. Now I'm ready to do step four, substitute known values, okay? Well, what do I know here? I know that at the particular instant that we're interested in, the S is equal to 500. So I can put two times 500. I know the DS DT is what I'm looking for, so I'm gonna leave that in the equation. Equals two, I don't know what the X is when s equals 5, I don't know what the x is. I'm going to just leave that blank for now and put in what I do know. dx dt is 25. And this is a great example, uh, again, of you may have to use given information to solve for desired quantities. Okay, I need to know what that x is, so in order to find out what the x is, I'm going to have to solve uh, for x at this particular moment when s equals 500. So a lot of times you're going to go back to your original equation to do that. Um, x squared plus 300 squared equals s squared, so um, uh, my s is 500, so x squared plus 300 squared equals 500 squared. All right, I still don't need to find out what these squares are if you know your 3, 4, 5 triangles. So if I know my 3, 4, 5 triangles, then I already know that x equals 400. If I don't know my 3, 4, 5 triangles, I have to go to my calculator and start dealing with 25,000 minus 90,000 equals 16,000 and then figure out the square root is 400. But see how it's helpful to know your 3, 4, 5 triangles? They, they use that a lot. All right, so x equals 400. Now we can put that value in here. Now, this is also a good example of how uh, sometimes you have to solve for the unknown rate. So in our last one, the unknown rate just came out of our problem. In this case, we have to actually solve for that DSDT. <clears throat> so we could do something clever like reduce the zeros on both sides since everything's multiplied. Right, I could just divide both sides by 500. I could divide both sides by 1,000 right away. Well, I guess not 1,000. But I could divide both sides by 200 right away. But I didn't do that. I just said, let's just crank it out. It's not where that doesn't save us too much. 1,000 DS DT equals um, 20,000 is what this is going to be, 20,000. So then divide both sides by a thousand and we get ds dt equals 20 and now let's uh, look at our units it is feet per second so in problems like this i'm usually not going to put the units in till the end you can keep the units in all the way through but it's going to get really messy so i don't personally recommend it but do at least at the end come back and put on the units all right you could, should also stop and ask yourself does this make sense right so the kite is moving 25 feet per second the string is only going out 20 feet per second does that make sense 
Yeah, in a way it does because the kite is traveling horizontally, but the string is going out as the as the diagonal, and and the diagonal is going to be longer inherently than this X, so it's not going to have to change as rapidly. So it actually does make sense if you think about it, but it's the kind of thing that might keep you up at night. Um, anyway, but it's correct. So there you go. That's page 251, number 14. So look, um, let me just go ahead and let you know what the homework on this is going to be. The homework is um, page 251. Let's see, I probably could have made this a little more, uh, but I'll just write out what I wrote. 7, 11, 13, 15, 19, and 33. Those are the ones that I handpicked for you as being good examples. So if you want, you can just, if you get it, just stop now and start doing some of these. I'm gonna do maybe two more examples and videos here um, in case you get stuck on these.